Hello and thanks for joining. Today we're going to be talking about the camera gear that I took on our 2021 Wind River Range trip. Uh, it's an extended backpacking trip, 10 day trip, and uh, we'll be talking about the Lumix G95 and other gear, so stay tuned and we'll dive right in. Okay, so first off, let's start with the main camera that I film video and shoot photography with, and that is the Lumix G95. Now, I've tried a couple times since I put out the uh, six-month-in G95 six-month-in video to uh, do an update review of the camera. I've used it now for, what, two years going on, going on two years? And um, I can't say enough about it, and really, I don't know what to say about it other than it's a great camera if you're looking for a lightweight, compact, um, you know, high resolution, uh, high resolution's relative, but you can look at all the stats, but um, I think it's, what, 26 megapixel, uh, it does 1080, it does 4K, uh, up to 60 frames per second, I think, in 4K. Um, there were three things that I talked about in the video that um, I didn't like. And one was the fact that it seemed like the display on the back would cut in and out. Um, if in certain situations, typically when I was using it on a tripod, and I figured that one out... And what that is, and there's a function button here, function button three. And right now I have it so that uh, the viewfinder is turned off. And there's three settings by default. You can change it. But uh, the standard setting is that the display lights up uh, unless you put your eye up to the eyepiece. But it doesn't know that it's an eyeball. So if you get an article of clothing, and it can be several inches away, and so you might not know that the issue is that you simply have an article of clothing, your hand, especially in portrait mode, you know, that's in the way that's triggering the viewfinder to activate, in which case the viewfinder comes on and the digital display goes off. So you can cycle out of that mode, by pressing the function three button, and that will simply turn off the display entirely, and everything is going through the viewfinder. And the third option is to press it again, it turns off the viewfinder, it will not switch back and forth between the display and the viewfinder, and it just turns the viewfinder on all the time. And this is normally the mode that I use uh, most frequently these days, it's just the digital display, there are some lighting situations and other situations where I only want to use um, the eyepiece uh, for, you know, focusing. Uh, and so normally it's one of those two modes, and most often it's the digital display on the back of the camera. So that was one thing. The other complaint that I had had to do with focusing and the autofocus. And I think that, again, just with my issue... So when I was using autofocus, I was using AFC mode, and the continuous focus mode is just annoying for the use cases that I have. And so when I focus, it's a lot of times manual focus, especially for photography. And uh, when it's not manual focus, then I shoot in AFF uh, mode. AFF, AFS mode uh, is what I do, and that has solved that uh, issue. So uh, those were the two primary issues. I can't even think of the third one. I've tried to shoot this video three times talking about the complaints that I had originally for the first six months, and there weren't many. Uh, there were three, and um, I don't even remember what the third one was. But like I said, I've tried to shoot the video three times, and so I'll, maybe I'll cut a clip in here now of me talking about that uh, from a previous attempt. But I love the controls, I love the layout, you can work the camera effectively in the dark once you get used to the buttons, because they are tactile, 
and there's a dedicated button for white balance, which honestly I never use. Uh, there's a dedicated button with two dots on it that lets you easily distinguish. So this button, the white balance button is raised up higher than the other two. The middle button has two uh, dots, tactile dots on it. And so it's easy in the dark, uh, even with, you know, thinner gloves on to tell that you're on the ISO button. And then uh, the exposure button, which I use hardly ever. And I never use the white balance button. And so it's really this ISO button that I use all the time. Uh, oh, I know what it was. It was the 4K crop. And so if you press this one, this button, it'll automatically go into video mode regardless of what you got it set in. But what I figured out more recently is that uh, even if I set it in 4K mode, and I have updated the firmware on this, so if you haven't, you may get different results. Uh, I've also updated the firmware on my lenses. And even though I bought lenses new, they did not come with the most up-to-date firmware on them. And uh, if you guys need to see a video on that, maybe I can try and do that. But there's other videos out there on how to update the firmware on your lenses. But I suggest you do that to get the most out of uh, your G95 camera. Um, and what I do these days is I put it in um, this mode right here with the little... It looks like a video camera and the word M on it. And the thing about that is that really lets you adjust the uh, f-stop on the camera and the shutter speed on the camera while it's in video mode. So you have better control over the exposure of your video and you don't get the crop that you do uh, when it's just full auto uh, video, or at least that's my experience. So I really have no complaints about this camera. I think it's a great camera. Um, Am I interested in the Lumix G6 that's coming out, GH6? Well, sure I am, and I'll look into it. But, um, you know, my thing is I like to keep the weight down uh, on backpacking trips, and this is a super camera, produces great images. If you haven't seen the uh, best images of 2019 or best images, uh, landscape photos of 2020, I'll put a, a card up over here if you're looking at this on a computer you'll be able to click the link at the top uh, left I guess of the screen and uh, see that um, so anyway this is the main driver and now let's talk about lenses so I brought three lenses with me and I've really only used I've technically used all three of them uh, the main lens that I really love is this uh, 14 to 140 uh, Lumix lens. It has power uh, stabilization built into it. Uh, it's just a great lens. And I did not bring my uh, 200 to 400 telephoto this year. Saved me a lot of weight. Uh, and I because this goes 14 to 140 uh, instead of the 12 to 60 lens, you know, this gives me a lot more flexibility in general, uh, backpacking, and even in other situations where I'm not backpacking, but I love this lens. That's one of the lenses that I brought. Uh, the next lens that I have is a Lumix lens. It's a 15 millimeter prime, and I love this lens because it's a fast lens, and it allows me to adjust, um, you know, down to a 1.7 uh, f-stop, and I can put it in auto mode if I want to control it with the hand controls on the back, uh, which is great. Or put it in full auto if I want to use the AI mode, which for just kind of point and shoot stuff, uh, that's great. The, the IA or AI mode, IA I guess, um, <clears throat> is great. And then this allows, putting it in auto mode, allows you to control that with the uh, hand dials. So that's super uh, and you can get shallow depth of field, and it goes all the way up to F F16. Uh, so you got a lot of flexibility there to do, you know, uh, landscape and art macro uh, type photography with it. Uh, so super lens, not quite as wide as the 14 to 140, but this the uh, 
uh, f-stop range on this is, is a lot slower. So I think it's like 3.2 to 5.6 if I remember right. 3.5 to 5.6. It's a G Vario. Uh, 3.5 to 5.6, 14 to 140 focal length, and uh, takes a 58 millimeter filter. So the third lens is not a Lumix lens, and I have used this a little bit. I intended to use it for astrophotography, but the weather has not cooperated. We've had a lot of clouds at night, and combine that with a full moon. Um, has, is, I just haven't been able to take advantage of, of this lens and I may just do a video just on this lens. So this is a um, Laowa um, seven and a half millimeter wide angle lens. This is not a fisheye lens and it is an f2 lens, 46 millimeter filter. Um, it does have uh, you can stop down to 22 on it, uh, and it's full manual, so none of the automated controls on the camera body uh, will help out here. There's also no internal stabilization, and really this is what I use this for is uh, trying to get like Milky Way shots and stuff like that, which was why I brought it. Now, weight-wise, I would still bring this again um, because it just weighs almost nothing, even though it's primarily metal construction. Uh, and it's just great to have, you know, if the clouds had cooperated, we would have some really cool um, Milky Way photos with some of the mountains and nice foreground composition uh, for you to look at. But we don't because <laughs> clouds and bright, bright full moon. So those are the three lenses that I've taken uh, here on the trip. Other items that I brought, and I've used all three of those. Uh, other things that I've used was this ice uh, filter. And this is a uh, basically a star glow uh, filter uh, to use with astrophotography. Again, I haven't used it because I haven't been able to get any astrophotography shots because of the cloud cover at night. Uh, but I would take this again. I do want to figure out a different way to carry it because I think this case probably weighs a lot more than the filter itself, uh, which is right here. So, you know, I really should just figure out how to just take this by itself and cut half the weight there. So there's that. Um, I also brought this year, and you guys have probably seen these in the 2020 Trek series, these Think Tank uh, battery holders, and these are excellent for organizing your batteries in, in your pack. They do have belt loops on them, but I don't use them on a belt. And the nice thing about it is as you go through batteries, and there's different techniques that people have for managing their charge versus dead batteries, but what I do is if they're ready to use and ready to go fully charged, they go in the compartment like this, in other words, with the charging pins down so I can't see them. And then as I go through them and uh, either fully deplete them or nearly fully deplete them uh, and replace them with a fresh battery, then I put them back in here with the pins up and I easily can visually or tactily identify if I'm working in the dark and trying to grab a battery. I can tell uh, if I'm grabbing a charged battery or non-charged battery. And then as far as just keeping batteries in your backpack, um, it's pretty easy to fill around in the dark and understand that this, this, these are batteries uh, and not have to dig for individual batteries, you know, in your compartment, uh, in your backpack. So, and I do use both Lumix and uh, uh, other secondary market batteries out here. Uh, this is a 10 day trip. I brought 12 batteries this year, which is more than enough. Last year, uh, 12 batteries would have barely been enough, and that's just because I'm not shooting as much footage this year uh, as I did last year, which was a lot of footage. So uh, there's those things. I also brought um, two battery packs uh, to charge stuff with, and this would go beyond photography. So I have GPS equipment out here. Um, 
you know, a Garmin Mini to keep charged. I have a phone to keep charged uh, that I use for, you know, alarms so that I can get up in the, you know, AM hours to do astrophotography uh, or use the EarthMate app for my Garmin Mini. Um, so anyway, I have these two battery packs and I have this universal cable. So this will handle, you know, iPhone type uh, lightning cable stuff and USB uh, mini, micro USB actually, micro USB, and then USB-C, um, all of which I think I have components out here that use those things. I have a couple of different lights. I have this ring light, which I love in general, and it's a micro USB charged uh, light. There's three different settings. So that's great. I also have uh, one of the square lights. Let's find my I don't know what I did with it oh it's right there um, and I guess before we get off the well I guess we haven't talked about the Osmo action yet, so we'll just keep going so I've actually got like three lens cloths you can't hardly have enough of those for a variety of reasons um, this is critical if you're doing astrophotography time lapse stuff with the Lumix G95 camera and you want to use an external battery pack. So I haven't used even one of the two, and we're on day, what, seven of being in the backcountry, uh, and I haven't used one of these battery packs up yet. Uh, I think these are a 20 milliamp hour battery. Um, and the other one really is to be reserved to do astrophotography time lapse at night. And if you've got the Lumix camera, the Lumix G95, make sure to use this cable that came with it, the OEM cable. You may be able to get aftermarket cable similar to this, but it sends the correct voltage to the camera and so this is not, not any USB micro USB cable will correctly function with a battery pack and provide the correct external battery voltage and run you know all night on your your time lapse so make sure to bring the OEM cable if you're doing that Let's see what else I got I've got the uh, diffusion filters for uh, my lamp, which is another light, the Loom Cube Air, and I got the two diffusion cubes for that. Um, so that's a light. I've got extra SD cards here, SD and micro SD cards uh, in this case. I'll probably switch to a different case next year, but you know that stuff there. I don't really need the USB reader in the field um, and then filters I have used some of these filters already with the 14 to 140 in particular uh, 14 to 140 millimeter Lumix lens and I just run this stack of uh, circular polarizer and um, fading um, ND filter set, fader set, so that I can adjust the exposures in really bright outdoor conditions, which is where we're in a lot of time. And I think this is using a 58 to uh, 72 millimeter step ring on this. And I just run those stack all the time just because it's simpler than messing with you know taking on taking off i also have the step ring that would get me that would work with either the seven and a half millimeter uh, lawa lens or the lumix 15 millimeter prime and then i also have the same sort of setup that would go into this step ring um, if i wanted to use you know the bigger diameter if i wanted to use these little filters uh, or the big filters on the little one is what the step ring's for. And then this will go directly into, so I think these are 46 millimeter, yeah, 46 millimeter uh, 
uh, filters and there's an ND fader on here uh, for that. So uh, that's all the filters that I carry for the Lumix camera. And then now let's talk about the Osmo Action Camera, which is what I'm actually filming this on right now, so that you could see the Lumix camera. Um, I carry four batteries, so one in the camera that I'm using right now, three extra batteries. Uh, traditionally, I would be shooting a lot more on the Osmo Action Camera, including underwater shots of trout, you know, swimming around that we're catching trout and doing trout fishing and releasing trout. Um, the weather has generally been a lot colder this year and then previous years uh, during this outing. And so I just haven't done a lot of that this year. I've just been using uh, my Peak Design camera clip on my belt and uh, when I'm not backpacking, because that's what I use. Well, it's on my belt right now, so I'll take it off and show it to you in a minute. But, um, but when I'm fishing, I just put it on my leather belt and uh, attach the Lumix G95 right to the Peak Design uh, camera clip. And then when I'm backpacking, it goes on my backpack shoulder strap and I wear it there and just clip the camera there, the Lumix, and carry it all the time. Uh, and then I've got an indie filter set for the Osmo Action. I haven't used that because I am just have been using the Lumix so much. And then there's another uh, lens cloth. So that really just brings us to the Osmo Action itself, and the little tripod that I brought. So let's talk about those when I change cameras. Okay, so this is the Osmo Action that I was just using to film the first part of the video. Uh, I love the camera. If the Osmo Pocket 2 was water sealed, weather sealed uh, reasonably, then I would probably uh, use the Osmo Pocket, but I've got two of these Osmo Action cameras uh, used to last year. I only brought one this year. And then I just used this little uh, tripod. Um, I wish there was a very lightweight, ultralight tripod that was, you know, at least 18 inches tall would be my preference. Um, maybe two feet, but it doesn't need to be a six foot tall tripod, something really super ultra lightweight that I could use. I just haven't found that product on the market yet. Uh, the other thing that I use with the Lumix G95 that I actually took off the camera to bring out this year was an L bracket by Peak Design that works with the camera clip. I think it's the Ellie. And uh, I had to take that off because it doesn't work with the Manfrotto um, quick release plates that I was using on all my tripods. And uh, so I just took, took those off for the trip. And so between this year and next year, uh, when we'll come out, I'm going to figure that out and I'm going to run the L bracket on the Lumix G95. And that may require me to get a different tripod and certainly a different head that will work with the Peak Design uh, clips uh, L bracket. But you know, that's it. And I've only used this uh, once so far on the trip. Uh, we may use it some more, but I just haven't used it as much as I normally do. And then the tripod can work with either the uh, Lumix G95 directly connected to it or the uh, Osmo Action, obviously. And I've got somewhere the little tool. I mean, it does take a hex tool to put on and take off the uh, the plates on the bottom of the Lumix G95, the Peak Design quick release plate that goes with the Peak Design camera clip. Um, and I've got the little tool that just comes, Peak Design sends them with their stuff. So I've got two or three of them. And uh, you can just take off the clip and then mount the uh, Lumix G95 directly to your tripod head or, to, or place on the, your tripod. Uh, that is an extra step, um, but, you know, it beats carrying a three-pound Peak Design tripod uh, into the backcountry, which three pounds is not a lot if you're in the front country or you're doing day hiking or something like that, but I just didn't want to carry three pounds, even though I own the Peak Design 
you know, compact tripod, uh, I just don't want to carry three pounds of tripod around the whole time because mostly with the G95 camera, um, you know, I do everything hand, most everything handheld. Now the astrophotography would really benefit and requires kind of a tripod because you're doing a lot of extended photos, but most everything else I do, I can get by with, uh, you know, the manual settings or automatic settings on the uh, Lumix G95 itself. So, um, anyway, things that I've used and not used, I've obviously used the G95, the three lenses, the batteries, that kind of thing. So let's just talk about what I haven't used so far this year a lot. I haven't used the Osmo Action a lot. I certainly haven't used the charger because I actually brought the charger because I was anticipating using the Osmo Action a lot. So I haven't used that enough to justify carrying those things. I think normally I would have burned through four batteries. I haven't used this. And again, it's because I haven't done a lot of, you know, light painting with astrophotography or nighttime photography yet on this trip, which again is a little unusual. I probably still carry this. So by and large, I really didn't carry a lot of extra stuff that I haven't used. Most of the stuff that I haven't used is related to the Osmo Action uh, camera itself. And I think the issue there has more to do with the weather and me not wanting to get in the water and put this camera down four foot deep in a lake that's, you know, in the 30s or, or low 40 degree water temperatures um, to get pictures of fish when, you know, it's just really cold outside too. It would be different if it was hot, so. So that's the, the short and dirty review of, uh, I guess, the camera system that I'm using this year in 2021 for backpacking. And uh, just kind of an update on the Lumix G95, you know, two years in now instead of six months in. And I just can't say enough about the camera. Um, I don't regret its purchasing it at all. I will take a look at the G86 once it comes out, but you know, if it's bigger and heavier, I mean, unless there's really something it can do that the G95 can't do, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll be on the fence probably. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I hope you like the content. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and uh, leave comments below. So remember, when you can, get up, get out, live a little. See ya. Oh, was that two that jumped up? Do I have two again? Oh my, that's twice. One on the stonefly and one on the dropper. Amazing. Look at that, two brook trouts. A mouth hook on the stonefly and a mouth hook on the dropper.